when buying a new keyless entry lock, one of the worst things that can happen is hating it right after installing it. Here are six things you need to know before buying a keyless lock. Number one, the lock is too loud. Keyless deadbolts require motors to move the tumbler. Motors create noise. So your new lock is going to create some noise. A side note here is that a different kind of keyless entry lock, not necessarily smart, but the keypad locks like this Schlage keypad still allows keyless entry, but requires you to throw the tumbler yourself. So you can silently sneak in like a ninja, or you can slam it open and announce your presence. This style keyless lock is much quieter. However, if you're moving to a keyless lock because you have arthritis or some other problem where the twisting motion causes you pain, this is not a good option for you. Back to the noise aspect, how much you care about sound can depend on the layout of your house. A loud motor doesn't matter so much if it's leading into a large shared space, but a loud lock could certainly wake someone up if their bedroom is right off the entry. Even with a dome white noise machine running at top speed outside the baby's room. The best way to get around the sound issue is to try to find one in person so you can hear it for yourself before pulling out your wallet. If you can't, I will share the next best way to hear different locks towards the end of this video. Number two, the lock eats batteries. How annoyed would you be to find out that your Wi-Fi enabled lock goes through batteries every six months? How about every three? What if that number drops down to every six weeks? It's not just annoying, it gets expensive. I have two family members that have the Schlagen code and both saw this behavior happen both in the original lock and in the warranty locks. As the circuit board on the lock wears out, it starts eating through more batteries at a faster rate until it burns out, which leads to issue number three. How long is the lock going to last? Buying some sort of wireless hub costs extra with some of the Wi-Fi enabled locks. But if a lock eats through batteries and the lifespan is much shorter, you're better off buying a lock with a separate Wi-Fi connect option. It's cheaper because the lock lasts longer. The pairing is successful. There are also places where a motorized lock is just a terrible idea. Take my back porch as an example. With a Western exposure, the afternoon heat in the Sonoran desert will kill anything, any kind of lock that has a battery within a few months, if not sooner. The Schlage deadbolt that lasted 10 years on my front door only lasted two months right here. So old school it is on the back porch. Please learn from my expensive mistake. If the front door was exposed to the sun in the summer, I couldn't have a smart lock here either. But despite the 150 degrees Fahrenheit it saw in January, the coldest month, the Alfred DB2 is still alive after three years of use. Really consider the environment that your lock will be facing so that you're not setting it up for failure and you're not wasting your money. Number four, does it have battery backup? Some locks have the ability to charge the motor even if the batteries go out. Alfred locks use a micro USB external charger. That was instant. Some of the Yale locks and Lockley locks use a nine volt battery with those two little nubs you see here. Honestly though, my Alfred gave me months of warning because the batteries lasted two years. However, if I had the Schlagen code, I would be concerned and battery backup is a good idea for any lock that also provides Wi-Fi and goes through batteries more often. Next, does it come with a gasket? A lock without a gasket is going to leave a mark. When it's time to replace that lock, the next lock is not going to be a perfect match. This old outside is connected by paint. Oh, that's, that hurts. That sucks. A gouge in the paint, leaving a Schlage keypad shape, took a bit of the excitement off the new Alfred lock and required a repair on the newly painted door. 
the next lock is not going to need much, if anything, just because the DB2 came with a protective silicone gasket. Number six, some keyless entry locks have extra safety features such as adding random keys before and after the code. So someone looking over your shoulder does not guess your code. How it locks can also be a feature. With the Alfred here, all I have to do is choose any key, hold it for three seconds and it will lock. Fingerprints might be an issue. If you aren't likely to clean your keypad like me, the ability to lock using any key is a good way to throw off anyone looking at fingerprints. Just make sure you don't use the same key every time you lock the door. Now, after you've experienced a good keyless lock, you won't ever want to go back. The convenience of knowing who's coming and going, opening the door remotely for your neighbor to water plants without having to give a key, giving a code to Santa, and all sorts of ways you've never thought that you'd use this technology. I certainly didn't. But all these other issues are features to think about so that you don't have regrets later, sometimes much later. In an upcoming video, I'm going to collect the sound from different smart locks to get a fair comparison. Stay tuned for that one and I will put it right here when that comes out. I hope you find the best keyless lock for your home with no regrets.